Welcome to our third lesson in systems of equations. In our third lesson here, we are going to be solving using the elimination process. And the elimination method is adding two equations so one variable is eliminated, okay? Technically, we're adding negatives, um, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So if you look at these two equations, right now we've got the 2x plus 3y equals 11 and the negative 2x plus 9y equals 1. So if we were to just add those two equations together, notice how they're both in the same form. Okay, they're both in the same form. If we add them, add your columns just like you would, x's with x's, y's with y's. So if we add them, we end up getting 0x here plus 12y equals 12, okay? We've eliminated one variable. This is gone. So now we have a one-step equation that we can solve. y equals 1. So now that we know y equals 1, we can plug that back into one of the two original equations. Doesn't matter which one, okay? Doesn't matter which one. And we get 2x equals 8 divided by 2, x equals 4. So our solution is 4, 1, x is 4, y is 1, okay? And we did that because we had a positive 2x and a negative 2x originally, okay? And so when we combined those, the, the x's were eliminated. Now you might ask, well, what if they aren't the same number? What if you have 3x's and 5x's in another one. Well, there's a way we can still use this method by multiplying um, one or both equations by a value to make them look a little different, okay? So this method, think about when this method is going to be the most helpful. Anytime you have standard, standard form, this method is going to be probably one of the easier to use. You don't have to worry about rearranging and keeping track of signs, and that's what I found. Um, most students will make mistakes when they try to see a system of equations like this, and they're like, I like graphing, and that's the only method I'm going to use. And then they make mistakes in their rearranging. So um, just be warned that, you know, I know you probably have gotten some practice by now graphing and even using the substitution method. Um, and so you, you're kind of like, I got this. I don't want to learn anything new. But um, trust me that this is, this is going to be a helpful method for you. Here's a real world example, okay? And again, we're going to have these two equations in standard form, so it, it's, it's super helpful to have. So we've got um, the band is selling popcorn and mixed nuts, and they sold a total of 240 cans, and they collected um, $1,614, okay? So again, let's write our equations. We're going to uh, define your unknowns. X is going to equal popcorn, okay? Put pop there, and y equals nuts. So if we have, if we sold to a total of 240 cans, that's just the x plus y, the number of popcorn cans and the number of mixed nut cans is 240. And then you think about that we are collecting $5 for every can of popcorn and $8 for every can of of mixed nuts and we collected 1614 for the total value. Okay, so here's a situation where we do not have opposite um, x's or opposite y's in this case. But what I'm going to do is I can make this equation look a little different, okay, by multiplying everything by 5. And that equation is going to look like this. Leave that's 1,200, okay? So what I've done is I've taken that top equation, I've multiplied everything by 5. So now, if you look, I have both of them have 5x's. Now, if I were to 
add 5x and 5x, I would get 10x, right? And I wouldn't eliminate that variable. So I'm not only going to multiply that top equation right here by 5, but I'm going to multiply it by negative 5. So that is going to change the sign of all three of those values, okay? So now when I go to add my columns, 5x minus 5x, now I get that 0x, that x is eliminated, okay? And then I have the 8y plus a negative 5y, which is the same as 8y minus 5y, which is 3y, and that's a positive, right? So I'm going to put that plus there to remind us of that. And then 16, 14 minus the 1,200 is going to give us 414, all right? And again, that is eliminated, that 0x is eliminated, and I have one variable. So now I can divide both sides by 3, and I get y2 equal, let me do my math here real quick, um, 138. 138. So that means we sold 138 cans of mixed nuts which means if we plug that back into our x plus y equals 240, okay, remember the um, y is 138. So x has to be what? One-step equation there. So x has to equal 102. So our solution, and again, taking a moment to remind ourselves that we sold 102 cans of popcorn and 138 cans of mixed nuts. Here in our final example of um, elimination, we have the two equations. And if you notice, both equations, there is no common x's or y's that if we just multiplied one equation by, we would um, be able to eliminate a variable. So in this case, we have to multiply both equations by different numbers, okay? And so think of like LCDs. Like if you had an LCD uh, a fraction with a denominator of 3 and 5, what would your LCD be? Or if you had a denominator of 5 and 7, what would your LCD be? That's kind of what you need to think about um, as you're trying to multi figure out what to multiply both of these equations by. Again, so in this case, um, I like multiplying by 3s and 5s much better than 5s and 7s. So I'm going to try and eliminate the x's. So in order to do that, I'm going to multiply that top equation by 5. So that 3x, this 3x right here, plus 5y equals 10, I'm going to multiply it by everything by 5. So that leaves me with maybe 15x plus 25y equals 50, okay? So then my second equation, my bottom equation here, I'm going to multiply everything through by 3, and I'm actually going to multiply it by negative 3. So I remember I'm, I'm adding negatives instead of subtracting. It helps keep track of some things. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So that gives me that negative 15x plus, uh, minus 21y equals negative 30, okay? And so now I'm going to use elimination by combining my columns. 15x minus 15x is 0. 25y minus 21y is 4y. And then 50 minus 30 is 20. So now I can divide both sides by 4, and I get my y equals 5. Right? Awesome. And then so all I need to do now is to find that x. I'm going to replace... In that, and I'm going to use that first equation. doesn't have to be this way. You could reuse the second equation. It's just a personal preference right now. Um, I'm replacing the y with 5. And then I am solving 3x plus 25 equals 10. Subtract 25 from both sides. And I get 3x equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 3 and I get x equals negative 5. And then, so my solution is negative 5, 5. My x is negative 5, my y is 5. And then if I wanted to check 
Okay, again, looking at your, your first equation, or the second equation, let's just use the second equation, 5x plus 7y equals 10. So I have 5x plus 7y equals 10. I'm going to replace the x with negative 5 and then the y with 5. And then I'm going to do some math here, and I get negative 25 plus 35 equals 10. And if you do the math on that, that gives you 10 equals 10. There is another awesome check that I did it right. Again, don't forget to do your post-vid checks. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And have a great night.